As the nostalgia that surrounds old school RuneScape wanes, the community now faces new challenges. A big chunk of the player base feels disregarded and neglected, not just for weeks or months, but for an extended period of years. This is a heartfelt appeal to Jagex, urging them to set aside corporate greed and genuinely listen to the concerns of both myself and our community. In this video, I will discuss the absence of updates for high-level players, the disappointment surrounding the forestry system, the anticipation for Desert Treasure 2, the removal of the Ancient Prayer Book, the disparity in update history compared to RS3, the need for quality of life improvements, the subpar quality assurance practices, the abandoned Tombs of Amasket, and testimonials from players across all skill levels who are dissatisfied with the current state of the game. I'm not approaching this with only complaints, I'm also coming forward with viable solutions and ideas that have the potential to address these issues. While we possess a polling system as a community, we still feel unheard and devoid of avenues to express our discontent with the game's status. Our main forms of contact are, hilariously, still Reddit and Twitter. Most of my friends at a similar skill level have given up trying to reach out and do something and have simply moved on to other games or quit trying. I personally have been told a multitude of times that my thoughts don't matter, as I represent a small portion of the community, and I'm tired of it. The opinions of the high-level community hold significance, even among those who do not stream their accomplishment, those who are not part of clans, and even those who have quit the game entirely. We all want what is best for the game and yearn to revive it to its former glory. We should be collaborating to make the game enjoyable for everybody instead of treating it like an idle medieval clicker game that you pull up on your lunch break for a few minutes a day. Let's talk about what high-level content even is and what we consider to be challenging and intricately designed. When someone mentions high-level content, HLC, or demanding gameplay, they're referring to pieces of content with mechanical depth, such as the Inferno, Chambers of Zarek, and the Theater of Blood. These updates have held considerable significance in the speedrunning community and offer highly coveted rewards such as kits and the Infernal Cape, or just outright good GP. I've seen misconceptions crop up among both Jagex and the low to mid-level player base when they mistakenly label encounters like the Tombs of a Masket, Desert Treasure 2 bosses, Corrupted Gauntlet, Muzpa, Nightmare, even her harder variant Fasani, Nex, and Fight Caves as high-level, difficult, or even impossible. In reality, these encounters require minimal practice and involve straightforward mechanics, failing to provide us with substantial content to engage with, learn from, and truly challenge ourselves. We're looking for content to bite into and tear apart, to solve and find techniques for, and we simply haven't been getting that. By presenting these as examples of what is and isn't, it should be obvious why I'm disheartened by what Jagus and the community perceives as a lack of updates tailored to our needs. The most recent, truly challenging content release was the Theater of Blood, a staggering five years ago. For half a decade, our entire community has been deprived of updates, a community that serves as a beacon of inspiration for others to grow and excel within the game, fostering personal growth and a profound sense of accomplishment. We make the guides, entertain through streaming, and find all of the cool things that everyone else in the community uses. Even from a corporate standpoint, this community acts as a testament to the game's health and serves as invaluable advertisement and growth. I went through the entire list of updates on the wiki. Jagex's website is much worse for parsing and I gathered every single major update since 2016. Effectively, what I've found is we had two great years in 2017 and 2018, where the mods found their footing and put out some amazing updates. After that, it dropped off a bit. My chart doesn't include any QOL, so things like shift click drop aren't on there. 2016 was somewhat weak. The biggest additions were the Catacombs and Skatizo. No high level content was added this year, but the team was kind of still finding their footing, so that's kind of understandable. 2017 was the best year OSRS has ever had. I consider this the golden year. We had Chambers of Zarek, Inferno, Fossil Island, and everything that added, Grotesque Guardians, Chaos Altar, and Revenants. Chambers was pretty janky when it came out, but Ulm is an incredible boss fight regardless of whether or not they intended him to be fought the way he is currently. Cox added new prayers and a ridiculous amount of items, arguably too many. It has flaws, but it's easily one of the best pieces of PVM content in the game currently pretty good for the first attempt at a raid. Inferno is the best PVM in the game, and it's hard to argue otherwise. It's an incredibly difficult challenge meant for only the best players. It requires mastery of prayer control and positioning. Inferno speedruns are the most difficult content in the game, with the most room for mastery. Fossil Island, Grotesque, and Chaos Altar were all solid additions to the game in their own right as well. 2018 was an amazing year for content as well. We had Tob released, Challenge Mode Chambers, Dragon Slayer 2, and Vorkath. Tob is the best raid in the game. It has an extremely high skill ceiling, and every room has unique mechanical depth. 
Nilocus is the best raid boss in the game. Tons of depth with semi-random spawns. A speedrunner in the Nilocus room will be running all over the room, doing seemingly thoughtless actions, but it's all carefully calculated to keep the room as empty as possible at all times. Maiden, Bloat, Sodatseg, Zarpus, and Verzik all have an incredible level of depth with an immense amount to learn if you want to improve your times. CMs are great content even if they also have flaws. It's chambers, but it's cranked to 11. Doing every single boss in chambers in a row with immense stats requires mastery to survive. I personally enjoy speedrunning solos, but there are speed scenes for both trio and fives teams as well. CMs require careful inventory management, banking, and planning your exact route through the raid very carefully. Vorkath isn't the hardest boss, but it is a solid mid-game addition and teaches a lot of end-game mechanics. 2019 had no major high-level content, but it was still a really solid year. Kevos Lowlands, including Konar, Hydra, and the Farming Guild were all added. Song of the Elves also came out this year with Gauntlet and Elf Agility. Gauntlet has a lot of mechanical depth and is easily the hardest content to come out this year. It isn't incredibly difficult to get completions, but fast completions and speedruns require a lot of game knowledge. It's not my favorite piece of content, as at a high level you basically need to chance death to get any faster, which isn't particularly fun. 2020 is when things started going downhill. Since the Father was added, which meant we got Hallowed Sepulchre, which is actually the best skilling update of all time, so at least there was that. Nightmare was added, which is um, a lukewarm piece of content at best. It requires the ability to catch prayers before they land and some very basic movement, but really the only difficulty here was that it's a very long fight. The only other really notable update here was Trailblazer. 2021 had some attempts at hard content that really fell flat. Hard mode Tob was added, a complete step down from regular Tob in every way. Bloat is simply more random and loses a lot of depth from that. The cap in the Nilocus room is now so high it requires zero thought of how to get more of them to spawn, meaning you simply kill every big Nilo you see. Zarpus is easier in every way than regular. He actually has lower defense and you simply AFK after he screeches. The only room that was an improvement, in my opinion, was Verzik, due to her getting more health after tornadoes. The Jad challenges were a fun distraction for a day or two, but are very simple and have no rewards besides combat achievements. Speaking of which, those were added this year too. 90% of the combat achievements are a complete slog, either being simple KC tasks or very simple basic things you do once. I can count the number of good achievements on one hand, and that's pretty sad considering there are 485 of them. Fasani was also added, which people like for some reason. This took the only aspect Nightmare had going for it, the ability to do it with friends, and gutted that making it only solo. Her mechanics aren't any more difficult besides her punishing you with incredibly high damage when you make a mistake. I argue Fasani is easier than regular Nightmare, at least solo, as the fight is much shorter and there's no chip damage through prayer. The other major additions this year were Soul Wars, which is dead content, Group Iron Man, and A Kingdom Divided. 2022's major PVM was Nex and TOA. I've come around to Nex after fighting her quite a bit lately. No boss, except maybe Inferno speedruns, require the ability to switch like Nex does. Step unders and resetting are underrated mechanics. I still feel she doesn't have very much depth, but it's a lot better than their other attempts over the years before this. TOA has so much to talk about, I'm giving it its own section. But it missed the mark and was not a good high level raid like it should have been. Major updates beyond this included things like quest speedrunning and the PvP arena, both of which are completely dead. There are 11 people in quest speedrunning worlds as I look at them writing the script. That brings us to now. 2023 so far has added the Wildy Boss rework, which is a bot-ridden mess, forestry, and Muzbo. In six and a half months, that's what we've gotten in terms of updates. The endgame player base has been completely ignored in cries for QOL. Many of the speedruns we do are hampered by things that could be fixed very easily. CMs require I swap my spellbook with my max cape right after Ice Demon, six minutes into the 30 minute raid. That means I get to complete a maximum of five CMs per day. Top speedruns use the same thing at Sodatseg, meaning you have a pool of five Tob and CM speedruns you can do each day. This could easily be given a recharge of some kind, either sinking items or resources to recharge your swaps, perhaps lowering the total amount to one or two swaps, so you can't be swapping constantly at every activity. Valador Shield and Explorer's Ring charges are also relevant. Valador Shield is worth one and a half restores in one inventory slot, meaning it is practically required to complete an Inferno speedrun. Yes, the prayer points are that tight. Once you use your shield for the day, you might as well stop running. 
Explorer's running charges are used in many setups for additional run energy, but these are limited to one run per day as well. These both could be rechargeable in some way to fix this. Inferno speedruns require a Slayer task to run, meaning in order to run Inferno, you need to get a task somehow. The fastest and most efficient method the community has fallen on is Turiel cancelling to get a task from Neve, who has the highest weight for Inferno tasks. Even with an optimized block list and unlocks and efficient Turiel setup, you're looking at about 30 minutes on average to get a Zuck task. Sometimes you get unlucky and can go as dry as 4 plus hours without a task. If you have a Zuck helmet, you can get 3 attempts per task, but that's still 30 minutes on average per 3 attempts, which can be rinsed incredibly quickly. My solution to this would simply give the Jad Challenge Master the ability to assign you Tizhar tasks after completing 6 Jad once. This would be a separate task streak like Crystillia, and not reward any Slayer points or XP, it would simply be used for the Slayer Helmet bonus within Inferno, or Fight Caves, allowing speedrunners to run without being forced to kill goblins and cows. Forestry is woodcutting but with random events. It turned every main tree in the game into Motherlode Mine timed resource nodes, including Redwoods for some reason, with incredibly high XP rates. The random events are as simple as clicking a log on the ground repeatedly, they simply add a huge chunk of XP for players willing to interact with them. The only draw to forestry is the ability to do it with a large group of people. Increased XP makes you feel good as a player, but this update didn't add anything substantial gameplay-wise. Forestry worlds are still near full to this day. I'm not sure if this is mostly bots or if players are truly enjoying this update. I find it lazy, weak, and unnecessary. Woodcutting already has plenty of varied and interesting training methods. Two Tick and AFK Teaks were both great. Sulia Seps, Redwoods, Yews, and Blisterwood are all good ways of training with varying levels of intensity. This update has basically removed any reason to do Sulia Seps as any forestry tree will be the same or more XP per hour. This update simply rains XP down on everybody without adding anything substantial to the skill. RS3 receives update after update for their endgame PBM, and the best players in old school are left kicking sand. RS3 has loads of non-raid endgame PBM. There are three mini-raids tied into Dungeoneering called Elite Dungeons. These are Diablo-esque dungeons with mobs and bosses throughout, usually two smaller bosses ending with a huge final boss. There are multiple difficult endgame raid bosses. The only thing OSRS has like this is Nex and Nightmare. They have Calphite King, Virago, Barrow's Rise of the Six, Solak. They even relatively recently added Zamorak as a massive raid boss. They have tons of extremely difficult solo bosses, including Araxor, Zuck, Archglacor, and my favorite, Telos. Our only content with mechanical depth in this game includes Cox, Tob, and Inferno. And really, that's where it ends. Where are the difficult non-raid bosses? Next is the best we can come up with for end-game team encounters. RS3 has so many great foundations to draw from, and we haven't really seen anything. If you want something to solo that's difficult, your options right now are CM and Inferno, and that's where it ends. You can solo Tob, but you have to tick eat for 15 minutes straight on P2. They could easily fix this by just making one red crab spawn like in hard mode. RS3 has ridiculously difficult solo bosses that scale in difficulty. Telos has a risk mechanic where you can leave the loot you've received in the chest and do another kill, increasing your loot modifier but risking the loot left inside. Also getting more difficult each kill up to 4000%. Arch Glacor has the same in rage meter to keep the difficulty increasing. Then, RS3 has some incredibly difficult full raid bosses that require multiple coordinated teammates like Solak or Zamorak. When you compare old school to RS3, we really don't look so great in comparison. RS3 has horrible problems like the microtransactions and dailies. This in combination with their lack of poles means the devs have total freedom to make things for end game players. This has both ruined their game and allowed them to make some very cool bosses and pieces of content. RS3 is a complete mess but there are many aspects that received love and polish. The old school team should be taking some of these incredible ideas like Tello streaking and raid bosses and implementing them with the old school touch. QA in general has felt non-existent over the past year or two. Every update feels like it introduces some game-breaking bug. The most recent one was the rainbow text crashing people's client. We've seen some ridiculous bugs over the last year that seem acceptable only because it's RuneScape. They patched out Red X throughout the entire game completely by accident which we rioted in Falador over. If you missed it, it was a fun time. There was unlimited stamina inside of Inferno for about a week, requiring the Inferno speedrun Discord to stop accepting runs until it was patched. TOA introduced a bug where if your thrall is on top of something, its click box disappears, which is still unpatched. Hallowed Sepulchre had a bug where if you were 1 HP and wearing the Hallowed Ring, no traps would hit you. This was in-game for a week, and the record was annihilated by over a full minute. 
No one was banned, and the board has not been reverted. Barbarian Assault Poisoning Healers was broken for over two months. Ranged accuracy was broken when they released the beta prayers due to changes within said beta affecting the main game. The most ridiculous of all was the pathing bug that made you run in a boat arc when you ran diagonally, stalling you, which could have been tested by clicking anywhere a single time. At what point does this become unacceptable? Is it just okay because this game is old and we've just accepted it? It's okay that people's inventories were getting wiped at Gauntlet? It's acceptable that they literally broke Hunter when they released TOA, preventing you from catching anything? It's totally fine that the shadow accuracy was bugged and lower than it was supposed to be for multiple months? The Fang was similarly bugged for a couple weeks as well. Oh, Fasani wasn't able to drop any rare items for over 12 hours? I'm okay with that. It's actually easier to list the updates that didn't break something at this point than list the ones that do. I was so incredibly hopeful for TOA. It had been four years since Tob, and everyone was incredibly thirsty for content. Scaling invocations? This is their chance to add something for the entire player base. Something truly challenging for the veterans, should they want it, and something accessible for people to get into. And then TOA came out. And for that first week, I was still hopeful. This is an amazing base, they just need to clean it up a little bit. Instead, what we got is the mid-level raid. The raid not for us. The raid for people getting into raids only. Raising raid level doesn't make things harder or more interesting. It makes them hit harder and have more defense. It doesn't add mechanical depth. It makes the raid take longer. And that's it. For a while, it wasn't even worth going above 150 raid level for loot. I thought we would be getting additional interesting invocations that add instead of detract. I thought they would clean up some of the major issues with the raid, like Monkey Room. Instead, the raid was completely abandoned for many months. The changes they did make initially added the same amount of bugs as they fixed. I still have every bug and flaw I know of written down and cataloged, over 50 of them. TOA is not fun at a high level. Akka is difficult because he can combo you with 270 damage splats if you make a mistake at an unlucky time. Baba is difficult because you need to learn how to red X to avoid the entire fight or it's impossible. Warden is difficult because if you're standing on the corner of the skull AoE attack on P2, it pulls your prayer off and it hits you a 50, likely killing you. The entire raid lacks the interesting depth that Chambers and Tob has for improvement. How do you improve your technique at Kefri? Walk back and forth better? How do you improve at Baba? The best I've found is learning to spin my camera while doing Red X because I have nothing better to do. The raid is boring. I never feel like I've learned something new after completing a raid. Tob has incredible mechanical depth. There's something new to learn at every encounter, every single raid. Hitting the ceiling on Tob is almost impossible. It is so intricate. Inferno's the same. It's incredibly similar to chess. There's a correct way to solve every single wave, but there is such a ridiculous amount of permutations that learning these in their entirety is almost impossible. I miss the feeling of digging into a piece of content and being driven to learn everything in order to improve. That feeling of mastery is so incredibly satisfying, and putting that effort into something that gives appropriate rewards just doesn't exist anymore. The best GP an hour in the game is still Nex. After that, it's TOA. They aren't good money because they're the hardest thing in the game. The hard content are dead horses being beaten in by the high level player base out of desperation for something to chew on. With the release of Desert Treasure 2 came potential and disappointment. The Duke, which is literally a wall you fight with a skilling portion before you can actually fight it. Vardorvis, which is a walk back and forth between two tiles. Whisperer, which doesn't even damage you throughout the entire fight. And Leviathan, which is just stand in place and swap prayers with the occasional barrage to get behind him. There was a real issue with the ring drops where none were dropping. There was not a single Altor ring, which is the Berserker ring, dropped on day one. One of the drops I received was literally 64 bronze javelins. In 100 Vardorvis kills, I've averaged roughly 25 kgp a kill, half as much as a demonic gorilla. Aiza explained on day 2 on the Q&A that they actually use a unique drop system for the rings. You need to roll a ring three times in order to actually receive it as a drop. Effectively, this is the shard system from Muzpa for Venator Bow, except the shards are invisible and untradeable. Really, it's more similar to Sire's Bludgeon. This system heavily encourages you to camp one boss, as you may be getting close to a ring drop, or maybe not because you can't see if you have any shards. Meanwhile, the Soul Reaper Axe requires an untradeable hilt piece from each of the four bosses. This means when you get an axe piece, you're forced to choose. Do you keep grinding that boss to potentially get a ring, or actually move on and start working on the axe? This is a really frustrating dichotomy. It prevents people from getting lucky, and it prevents them from going dry as well. 
at the cost of freedom to move between bosses without feeling like it's a waste. This update was almost exactly as I expected. Four additional Muzbas, really it's three, Duke is a meme boss fight, a host of bugs, the Soul Reaper Axe was maxing over 400 with the spec for several hours after the first was obtained, and an overall hollow update due to the lack of prayer book edition. A few days after, the Awakened bosses were released, much earlier than expected, which very much so worried me. It felt like this would be a rush job just to appease people that were complaining. Would these just be slight cookie cutter variations? Yeah, Vardorvis will probably shoot a magic attack and a ranged attack. Oh no, how horrible. I bought 20 orbs expecting to kill them all without issue. I finished Whisperer in two orbs without a single problem, exactly as I expected, incredibly easy. Duke took me around seven or eight orbs. The fight is somehow more awful than the normal variant. It took me seven and a half minutes to finally kill him. Vardorvis took 12 orbs and was surprisingly decent with a lot of precise rapid clicks required to clear, but still not quite the challenge I was hoping for. Then I got to Leviathan. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. It's genuinely the best addition to the game since TOB. This is the hardest piece of content Jagex has ever intentionally added, yet it's completely fair and doesn't rely on heavy RNG factors. It's incredibly difficult and you need to execute perfectly to get through it. He drops a larger pile of rocks each roar, filling the arena over time, and has a tremendous amount of health. Making any mistake punishes you with around 50 damage or more. After stunning, he drops 10 rocks on your location, each tick filling the arena further. At 50% HP, he spawns a tornado that follows your location like P3 Verzik that hits you for 50 damage, if it reaches you, forcing you to run around the arena, but also be conscious of where you stack rocks as you swap prayers each tick. Finally, at that final 20% HP, he spawns that damage orb and starts hailing one tick prayer orbs relentlessly. You need to do about 600 damage to Leviathan while avoiding that tornado, flicking prayers each tick, keeping inside the orb to protect yourself from 25 chip damage per one tick orb, while also attacking the boss quickly enough the falling rocks don't fill the entire arena. It is the ultimate challenge. Nothing in the game comes close. This section is far harder than 6 Jad. The entire fight needs to be carefully planned in order to leave yourself the most possible room. At no point does it feel like a slog or waste of time. Everything culminates to that final challenge. You need to have played perfectly up to that point to even have a chance of survival. Awakened Leviathan took me 40 orbs, and that's far less than most have taken. Completing Awakened Levi is far harder than any combat achievement. I would argue it's probably harder than a Pillarless Inferno or Solo TOB. I was amazed the Jagex I know would add anything of this caliber. It's not perfectly designed and intricate, and I know not a single Jmod killed it probably, but it takes some serious courage to release something this difficult and hope the player base finds a way to deal with it. This is the kind of challenge I've always wanted. Now, unfortunately, these are a complete waste of money to fight and are only for the Blood Torva cosmetics. My reward for killing Leviathan, the hardest boss to date, was 51 rune arrows. Duke was 100 misterins. Once you kill all four, that's likely the last time you'll ever kill them. Even when the orbs come down in value, these will absolutely never even make up the cost of the orbs to fight. I love that they were willing to do something like this. I hope this gets Jagex to consider adding some scaling content that is truly rewarding at the top end. Imagine if Leviathan was actually lucrative to kill if you could kill him consistently with great reward. I love that idea of risking a huge entry cost for a potentially huge boon if you were good enough. If these had a 1 out of 10 to 1 out of 20 chance of hitting the rare table, that 2.5 mil entry cost might actually be worth it if you were consistent. Leviathan isn't exactly as difficult as a 4000% Telos in RS3, which took 13 and a half months to be killed for the first time, but it is a step towards that and I love to see it. Leviathan gives me hope that there is still potential for good PVM updates. I see a glimmer of light in the distance. I've been collecting feedback from anyone willing to provide it in my Discord. The questions I asked were, are you happy with the state of the game? If you could make change, what would be your priority? What makes the game fun for you? And what makes the game unenjoyable for you? I've gotten some amazing feedback from players of all different skill levels and backgrounds, everyday players, and some of the absolute best. 
The point is to show that we do exist and we do care. I've heard from so many people, you're a tiny percentage of the player base, you don't deserve content. I'm really getting tired of hearing when there's so many of us desperate for change. I'm just going to pick some of them that resonated with me and read them here. Sax writes, are you happy with the state of the game? I've been unhappy with the state of the game ever since a little after next release. If you could make change, what would be your top priority? Adding a single piece of engaging, difficult team PVM content. Creating a Discord server for high-level PVM feedback, akin to the one that exists for PKers, some tweaks to TOA, and a monthly new invocation. What makes this game fun for you? The emergent gameplay. How much simple rules in PVM can result in such high skill expressive opportunities? I want to do solo and team PVM content and push them to their limits. I just love theory crafting ways to overcome bosses, complete them faster, failing many, many times in the name of getting better for a boss that I feel is engaging is the best feeling in this game for me. Moving perfectly while switching gear and keeping track of attack cooldowns and prayers and other factors really adds depth and difficulty in an engaging way for me and keeps me hooked, always thinking about playing. What makes this game unenjoyable for you? Vertical gear upgrades. Monotonous activities with an XP incentive. Most skilling is just click the same 2 to 10 spots until the number hits 13 million. Feeling like my feedback isn't being heard or addressed whatsoever. Being alone in my enjoyment of aspirational PBM content, which is a consequence of friends quitting the game due to lack of updates as well as a lack of group bossing in general. I like playing efficiently, so if it's much more efficient to do something alone than in a group, that's what I'll do as much as it sucks to play alone. Sam Squanches writes, are you happy with the state of the game? Not currently happy with the state of the game from a Raiders perspective. TOA doesn't really hit. The invocations are underwhelming. I'm looking at you and Sanity. And the raid isn't satisfying to complete. TOB seems like the only fun thing to do in game for me. Whatever happened to Toscal Trials, the blue inferno? If you could make changes, what would be your top priority? I would adjust TOA invocations to complement high skill ceiling, skillful play, and be fun to complete. I would open more communication methods from high-level PVMers. Currently, it seems like there is a disconnect between high-level PVMers and Jagex. I would consider enrage mechanics for bosses similar to RS3 if there is a place for them. I'm a big fan of pushing the limits of the game to become a better player. It promotes longevity of the game. What makes this game fun for you? PVM makes the game fun for me, specifically raids. That's why top is my favorite content. I like to challenge myself, but I don't like annoying details like high defense. I'm looking at you, CM Tecton, and RNG mechanics like Maiden Blood. Improving at the game, helping others how to improve, teaching raids, etc., is where longevity can be found. Again, I ask, where is the Taskal Trials, Inferno 2, and will this have Enrage? What makes this game unenjoyable for you? Bad server slash ping would be the most unenjoyable factor about playing the game for me, and I wish this issue got more attention. Content-wise, probably seeing the direction this game has taken updates. The abundance of Iron Man QOL mid-game updates, instead of catering towards endgame, has left a lot of players burnt, quitting, etc. Money can only buy so much. Jagex needs to start listening to endgame players again if they want to revive endgame instead of taking advice from low-level players on Reddit who don't understand their place on the matter. Smork writes, are you happy with the state of the game? No. Updates have been progressively getting worse and worse since Tob release, with every PBM update having to be accessible to everyone. This always results in the updates having way too simple mechanics, everything being solved near release, and having to figure out my own challenges because the game offers none. If you could make changes, what would be your top priority? Absolute top priority is making more hard PBM content, content that actually isn't figured out on day one, like Inferno or Tob. Desert Treasure 2 hard mode things might be fun, but it's not really repeatable, which kind of sucks. We need content that we can strive to get better for months. Preferably both standalone bosses and a new raid aimed at high-level players. Another priority is actually listening to player feedback of high-level players for updates. It feels like Jagex has not cared about anyone who isn't the casual gamer for a while. What makes this game fun for you? Doing hard content is the only thing I enjoy doing in the game. Since there has been barely any high-level content the past four years, the only way I have fun is by speedrunning older content, Inferno, Cox, and CG. What makes this game unenjoyable for you? Lack of anything to look forward to. Last update I was excited for was TOA, but it was underwhelming and all feedback has been completely ignored beside the first week where some minor things were addressed. But none of the important things. Invos being boring, high invo scaling being HP defense buff instead of adding fun mechanics, monkey puzzle universally regarded as terrible. Being forced to spend hundreds of hours at Turiel for Inferno tasks is absolutely awful and insane that it has not been addressed yet. Three tasks on GM was a terrible, band-aid solution. I have two accounts with GM, and it's still terrible. 
Being limited by daily items, mainly magic cape, but also Fally shield slash explorer's ring is really annoying. Limits runs you can do a day for no reason. There's been so many responses I can't read all of them. These are the few that stuck out to me. I'm leaving the feedback channel up for more additions, even after this video goes up as a place to leave thoughts, as we don't really have any other outlet. I love Old School RuneScape. It's my favorite game I've ever played. I have over 13,000 hours played in Old School alone, a similar amount in RS3. I feel like what I love about this game is starting to slip, and it scares me. That feeling of running downstairs when I was a kid to the new RuneScape update full of excitement feels like a distant memory. Every time something gets announced, I'm hesitant to get my hopes up out of fear that I'll be forgotten once again. I want this game to grow and flourish like it did back in 2017 and 2018, with incredible knockout edition after knockout edition. Players like Wooks are long gone due to a lack of content, and it really is disheartening. Watching those massive streams of people like Wooks and Bodhi attempting Inferno on the first days of release to tens of thousands of viewers were truly incredible. Those first top streams of people trying ridiculous gear setups to try and get through it, T-Boeing, P2Verzik, and running around without knowing anything, we still exist and we want to be heard. Adding more content like Awaken Leviathan for us to challenge and content that scales up into those difficult ranks is a struggle we are craving. It's the content that we are looking forward to and hope Jagex continues to create for the community. That's it for the video. I've never asked for this before, but please try to spread this video around as much as you can to anyone you think would listen. I desperately want some change for this game I truly love.